Yes. 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 Um, Mr. Press. Mr. Pre Mr. President, I would move that the minutes of May 21st be accepted with corrections. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? Yes, Mr. President. As I alluded to, the motion was for the meeting to be at 5, but the minutes reflect 5.30. That's one. And then the special order. I don't know if we had a special order, but if we did, I'm looking at what's under special order or who or what it was. I'm kind of confused by that. Then when I look at the resolutions, there were two other resolutions that we didn't act on, but based upon the special meeting and what I kept reading in the media, the media kept reporting that we did not have an alternative proposal. That was wrong, but that's not the minutes. As a matter of fact, we had three proposals. Mr. Davis talked about the leasing. I talked about the transfer of the 3.9 through the general fund and to the wild and sewer. Those I know that they are not actions but at the same time, some of it is discretion. So that's not a correction, and, but and, it's a reflection of the minutes. And so the special order was not an action, but it's there. So in light of the special order and the proposals, it was a special meeting at 5 o'clock based upon the motion from the previous meetings and based upon how it's reflecting what we did in that special meeting. But you were trying to say something before I finished the corrections, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was just going to say that some of the discussion that are not reflected in these minutes, because these are a summary, will be reflected in the verbatim minutes when they are completed. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? I so I just wanted to, just so that you know. I clearly understand that, okay. Mr. Chairperson, but you remember special order even though it was a special order. You know, it says special order, but it really was a special meeting. And I don't know if we had a special order in that special meeting. I would have to compare it with the verbatim. But see, the special order is reflecting, it says a special order as approved by city council at this meeting. Maybe it was, but I don't know. But I know it was a special meeting. Then when you go down to the rest of it, based upon the context of that special meeting, the only motion was that we approve the alternative that Neely and um, Freeman supported. The abstention, I would put the reason for. And see, minutes are new to us. And so it's going to be another minute where you don't have the reason for it, but an extension I'm hearing we have to state a reason. And so I would like to put the reason that there was no discussion on the motion or the verbatim minutes could reflect my reason or it don't have to reflect it. But um, the proposal of the motions that was made was done in waste and I said I wouldn't be a part of it, so I abstain. Um, that would be the only correction if somebody seconded the motion to adjourn I don't know but we've got to talk about that because you don't just adjourn and get up so I'm looking at the minutes and I'm looking at the records and I'm looking at what's proper and so if there was a second to adjourn I don't see it reflected it just said President Kincaid adjourn the meeting but a motion to adjourn should be made and supported and then we should vote. People there, shouldn't just get up and leave. There, I don't there, know what happened there from There was a minutes. motion that was made and supported, and we did do roll on the adjournment of the uh, meeting on the uh, 21st. So those would be my corrections. And um, if they're noted, I'm ready to vote, unless there's any more. So noted. Um, how about the uh, minutes of the June 9th? Are there any corrections with those? That way we can deal with them all at once. Um, your Honor, 
I said, Your Honor, Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, on the June 9th, if we amend in the motion to correct, to accept and correct both, I would so make the amendment. And that means on June the 9th, um, you would have these corrections on Resolution 140326, it says, see attachment number one. Attachment number one is mistakenly made as attachment number two. There would be two designations of attachment number two and no attachment number one. Attachment number one would be the comments from the public hearing regarding the biennial um, budget but it's designated as number two, which should be number one. And um, one of the number twos would properly be the street light. Okay, the, those up, the other correction, if any, would be the same if it was a motion made and seconded for adjournment and the Councilman Davis abstention reason if you decide to note it. Other than that, that would be it. Those, those corrections are so noted. Any further discussion from council members on the, on the May 21st and the June 9th minutes? Roll, Madam Clerk. Both, both sets, we've taken care of them. You asked well, I did the amendment. Um, I had said them separately. I don't know if you want to vote on the amendment or what, but I made the we'll, amendment. We'll so. do them separate for Councilman Mays, Madam Clerk. Um, corrections on the minutes of May 21st. Roll, Madam Clerk. Ms. Copeland? Yes. Mr. Bowman? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Bowman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mays. Yes. Okay, minutes um, as um, moved and supported to be corrected of the June 9th uh, council meeting for the uh, discussion. Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Nolan. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Okay. At this time on the agenda, there's been a request for a special order um, by the emergency manager, uh, Mr. Darnell Early. Mr. Early, if you'd like to address the council. Mr. President, before you start, could I ask a question? Not, not, at, not at this time, Mr. Well, Mays. Mr. Er, not, not it's important, time. Mr. President. No, I'm, I'm going to allow Mr. Early It's to about me. that. I want to know if I may, Mr. President. You're out of order, Mr. Mays. I'm not recognizing any council member at this time. I've allowed Mr. Early to address the city council, and I'm asking it was Mr. Before Early he started, though. to address the city council. Mr. Ooh. Early. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Mr. President and the members of the City Council, uh, you have before you several orders uh, that have been acted upon by me. And the purpose of my special order this evening is to walk through basically what those orders are designed to do. And I intend to do that in accordance with the agenda and the specific topics that are there for our discussion, or for my uh, presentation, excuse me, and to uh, move, hopefully, these orders to the next level and to begin the implementation of the orders as well. And so with that as a backdrop, Mr. President and members of the City Council, over the past several weeks, you, the City Council, the Mayor, and the administration have been involved in discussions on the proposed budget that I presented to you a few weeks ago. Since that time, there have been a number of meetings involving you as a committee of the whole 
and gathering input from the public on the proposed budget in the form of public hearings. And this has all been very critical to the process of bringing me to the point of the order approving and adopting the budget. The budget, as you know, was prepared in accordance with the strategic plan that you worked on and adopted during that same period. Based on that process and the input received, the administration and I went back and made some modifications and adjustments to the originally proposed budget. Those adjustments were presented to the Finance Committee, so everyone is familiar with what's in the final budget. On Friday, June 20th, 2014, I executed the order which establishes the biennial budget for fiscal years 2014-15 and 2015-16, which begin July 1, as provided in Public Act 436. I have also executed the order which adopts the strategic plan that you approved early on in the process, which guided the discussions, which we used as a benchmark in the meetings to stay focused on the critical issues that face the city of Flint in these uh, emergency challenged times. I want to thank you, Mr. President and the City Council for your participation and help as we vetted each of the issues related to a balanced biennial budget, a strategic plan that catalogs priorities, offers a manageable deficit elimination plan and outlines a reasonable levy for revenue through millages and fees necessary to keep our service delivery systems function functioning for the next two years. Although not at the level we probably would all like to see, but when you are managing decline and retrenchment as we have been in Flint since 2011, it is critical to understand that in order to stay solvent, we have to implement cost containment measures, and the budget has to reflect those, me those measures. This budget does exactly that. It manages the only budget variable that is pretty much under our control, and that is expenditures. It also puts into order the expectation and forecast of revenues and the financial condition of the city going forward. I have also executed two resolutions which adopt the 2014-15 and 2015-16 operating millage rates along with the master fee schedule. Both documents are found in your copy of the budget. The orders executed on the budget and the strategic plan satisfy two points in the seven-point transition management plan that you also adopted. We plan to conclude discussions with the Michigan Department of Treasury on the deficit elimination plan prior to the next finance committee meeting. That is also a major component of the seven-point plan. As mentioned in your last finance committee meeting, I fully intend to bring a draft back to the committee as an agenda item for your next meeting. The orders executing the increased compensation and responsibilities for the mayor and the council and the gradual return of administrative oversight of the departments of planning and development and public works directly to the mayor also signify a stronger approach towards reorganization, towards organization development as we consider eventual transition back to home rule order under the auspices of a receivership Transition Advisory Board. The Blue Ribbon Committee on Governance is drafting its report for submission. I expect that to be available early July. That also is a component of the seven-point plan. The remaining issues of the seven-point plan, legacy costs and long-term sustainability, are still being developed. As you know, the budget was developed based upon the five-year financial analysis also, which also is provided to you as a part of the budget and as a component of the seven-point transition management plan. As we plan to move forward into the next fiscal year, beginning July 1, I'm pleased with the progress 
that has been made towards eliminating the deficit, putting in place some best management practices, reviewing and bringing labor peace through collective bargaining agreements, which you will see also in your work as the Finance and Administration Committee, and the gradual re-engagement of the mayor and the council that has been accomplished since January. We have accomplished a lot. But we still have some major hurdles to clear with respect to sustainability. I expect that to be the focus of our collective and collaborative efforts, again, going forward, as we continue down a path towards a sustainable home rule order. There are a number of issues, again, that we will be bringing forward to you in your committee form that will find their way to the uh, city council as a whole. Up until the time on which uh, we've satisfied those components and we can begin discussing transition. Again, my thanks for the input. I think this was an exercise very much needed because this is how cities work. The council and the mayor and the administration get involved in the process. No one gets everything he or she wants. No discussion individual makes it to a swaying point in terms of the development. But together and through the good leadership of the finance and administration chair, Councilman Josh Freeman, I think we've laid the groundwork for how to get things done in the city of Flint going forward. And those are the kinds of things that the Treasury, Michigan Department of Treasury, and the Office of the Governor, and I as the emergency manager will be looking to as we make final determinations about future transition. And so with that, the orders have been executed, and I look forward to the implementation phase, because everything in the budget has to be implemented. And the best way to implement what's in the budget is to make sure that the council and the mayor and the administration are working together on behalf of the residents of the city of Flint. I'm encouraged that that will happen. I believe that the time that has been spent as it relates to uh, the training and the orientation and other things have prepared you for your roles, and we will continue to move forward. That's my intent up until the time that my assignment here is completed. But when that assignment is completed, the city of Flint will be in a better position to move forward and satisfy the other components of the seven-point plan, primarily sustainability. Because if we're not able to sustain the good work that has gone on here to get us to this point in reducing the deficit, re-engaging the council back into a situation of governance and normalcy, uh, then we won't be successful long term. And so with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you and to the members of the city council for your assistance and help in moving the city forward. Thank you, Mr. Early, and for the audience and for my colleagues, um, Ms. Brown and I, uh, Councilman Nolden, met with Mr. Early prior to the meeting today to go over the agenda. He indicated to us that if council members wanted to continue our discussion on these orders, that they could make appointments uh, to meet with him, and uh, he would make uh, time available for us at that time. Um, now I'm going to move on to council committee reports, and I'm going to start with uh, public safety. Uh, Councilperson Van Buren. I have no report for this month. Okay. Uh, finance and administrative, Josh Freeman. Okay. Legislative, Councilman Neely. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, we, the legislative committee uh, convened today in the committee room to discuss two pending ordinance that we have before us. Uh, pending ordinance on the medical marijuana ordinances. Uh, just for a matter of record and for the public consumption, I would like to give the resolution numbers. Resolution number 130343.2, 130344.4. Uh, previously, we've had a moratorium on medical marijuana dispensaries inside the city of Flint. Uh, myself and Chair uh, Committee members Mays and also Kincaid, Council people uh, Vicki Van Vuren and also Mr. Nolan was present along with the City Attorney. 
uh, we made the modifications and amendments to go back uh, for another period of 30 days to be resurrected uh, at that time to come before this body for final approval and second reading. Okay, thank you, Councilman Neely. Councilman Davis on planning and development. I don't have anything, of President. Okay, thank you. And Councilperson Poplar on public works. Not at this time, thank you. Okay, there are no um, additional petitions or unofficial communications or communications from uh, other city officials. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Well, Mr. President. Okay. Um, Mr. President. Mr. Mace. Thank you. There was some unofficial communications. I heard you say that there was communications that Mr. Early and you and others met, and y'all decided for us as a body that we would not communicate on the communications that we just heard. That's and so if that's an unofficial communication, then I would use this time to say to the public, I don't agree to doing stuff like that. When we're talking about a two-year budget, when we're talking about water rates and economic development and police, I don't like people agreeing and making it look like I don't want to talk public and transparent. I was itching before he start to explain what this was. I know he congratulating you and Josh and him, but guess what? I can't make myself look like that in front of a public meeting. We are to discuss stuff openly, honestly, and transparent. Even the seven-point plan and stuff I didn't vote on talk about transparency. So, Mr. Kincaid, I really don't like you, Mr. Early, and the uh, clerk and nobody else deciding for us when we can talk to him publicly in a transparent meeting. And so I took this opportunity under unofficial communications to say that, and I want to make the record clear as it relates to me. I don't appreciate the public hearing that, and then we can't respond on it, because y'all done moved on talking about what y'all agreed to behind closed doors that we can't discuss publicly, but we're supposed to be a body of transparency moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Um, <clears throat> there are no appointments. There are no licenses, bonds. There are no resolutions this evening, no liquor licenses and no ordinances. So this is a time set aside for members of the public to address the City Council. Madam Clerk will call your name and I would ask you to come to the microphone and give us your name. Limit your comments. Uh, Ms. Brown will um, keep track of the time. And uh, first to be called this evening, Madam Clerk. Mr. President, before you do that, so we don't even have to vote to accept the budget? We don't have to do nothing. Is it done? Is that my misunderstanding? Because I thought I would see something on the agenda where you accepted it. So all of that is done? Okay. So all we got left on the agenda is public comment. Okay. Uh, the first, wow. Uh, the first speaker from the public is Mr. Murray's. Holbrook, Mr. Holbrook. Good evening. My name is Maurice Holbrook. I've been a resident of this city since 1954. And I'm kind of appalled at some of the stuff that's been going on. My brother owns a store at 1015 North Saginaw Street. I have been down here several times trying to get some help about the traffic going up and down this street. Nowhere in this country can you go and find, in a school zone, the speed limit 30 miles an hour. And I almost just fell to my knees. I was so disgusted last week. A policeman racing down the street and another car run by the policeman doing at least 55 or 60. I said, well, Somebody's going to, they got him now. Kept going. We sat two friends of mine in front of the store. After I came down and complained, I said, I don't want to hear anybody say they didn't know what was going on. And I left out. When I got back, a truck from the city came down, 
with their lights flashing. They worked on it three and a half hours and still couldn't get the light right. Come back, and this was just about two weeks ago, a young lady got hit by a guy running through the light. They put a flashing red light up there. Run through the light, hit a lady, she's still in the hospital. And nobody, I haven't heard or seen anything about it yet. The, the day they had the Juneteenth celebration, policeman pulled the lady over. I said, finally they're going to do something. I went over to congratulate him. And his words to me, ain't nobody got time for this stupid ass tickets. We got to go on calls. But then when I went on down the street and I'm coming up Martin Luther King, that nine police cars lined up and down the street were for the Juneteenth parade, which could have been one or two. But if any of you live anywhere near Fifth Avenue and where Rallies is, any time you go approach, I've been in many cities all over the country, a block before you reach the school zone, you see a sign letting you know you're approaching the school zone. That's going either way. If you go down North Saginaw Street, the sign is on the corner of the school, right at the corner. Now, why are you going to throw on brakes or slow down now? You're already on top of the school. The other sign is up in a tree. Nobody can even see it, now that the tree is sprouting. Somebody needs to do something. Now, I, I was lucky enough to see a young lady, uh, her and her, they came down and Mr. they said, Hover, well. You, you need to sum up. Your time is up. We okay. Sum up. Give me one minute, please. Yeah, I'm letting you sum up. Thank yeah. You. They said, we'll be down there. When they came, they didn't have a radar on the truck. Said, we'll have to get somebody else down there. I showed him the copy where everybody that ran through that light or came down there flying through the street. He looked at it. He said, you got to be wrong with it. I said, well, I got five witnesses sit here. We did it together. He said, do you know that's over $10,000? And that was in two and a half hours. Now, the city claimed they strapped for money. What's wrong with getting some policemen down there to help stop these people from running up and down the street? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, can you let the public know why we don't respond? You, would you do I, I that will. and let them know that it's just, an emergency order, order and that we ain't just, just sitting here? Just, that you, you and the emergency manager agree to that? For the public, for the public um, that address city council members, there's an emergency manager order that requires city council members to allow the public to speak first and then at the end of the meeting, Council members have five minutes to respond uh, to the public. So I just wanted the public to understand we're not ignoring you, and thank you, Mr. Mays, but it's an emergency manager order that I've been instructed to follow. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Mr. Jonathan Shaver. Mr. Shaver. Hi my, <clears throat> hi, my name is Jonathan Shaver, and I'd like to thank the council for uh, giving us the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, the issue I want to address is the uh, chicken ordinance for the city of Flint, the ordinance uh, regarding chickens for the city of Flint. I believe that it is high time that we change the chicken ordinance. I believe that we should be allowed to keep um, chickens for uh, food in the city, especially in residential zones. I feel that... Um, uh, the old rules are antiquated, and it's definitely time to change that. And uh, it was sort of laid out in the master plan, and I think now it's high time that city council gets together and sets up guidance for city chickens. It is a great um, way for people to save money on their bills and be more sustainable. We just heard the emergency financial manager talking about sustainability, and if we're going to be a sustainable city, Everyone in the city needs to be sustainable on their own, and chickens are a great way to do that. So uh, thank you so much, and um, I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Our next speaker, 
Our next speaker is Mr. Mark Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin. Hi, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Um, just lost my notes here. First of all, I want to say I, I want to thank the mayor, some of the city workers, and uh, especially Raul uh, Garcia for stepping up during volunteer days and doing a, some uh, helping the rest of us clean up this city. I, I am just I, I, I wish more of uh, those who are taking the lead would would help us to clean things up. Um, I'm here to address the overgrowth in the city on abandoned properties and vacant lots. Uh,